back to the Brotherhood of Men guys, my name's Andy R and today I'm going to tell you the story of the worst thing a woman has ever said to me, the most disrespectful, disgusting thing I have ever heard from a woman's mouth directed at me to this day. Yep, that's right, this is that video. I told you I was going to tell you this story and you've probably been looking forward to it, I hope you have. Um, but when I tell you, oh, even now it, it makes me seethe, it makes my blood boil. But I'm going to tell you this story, I'm going to tell you what she said to me, how I reacted and the aftermath of that. So, here goes. This happened 30 years ago, pretty much to the day to be honest with you. I was uh, 25, 26 at the time, I'm 56 now so yeah, 30 years ago. Uh, I've had a, a friend called Jim since I was since I was quite young. Uh, we've been close friends. We're still friends today. Uh, he's got a sister called Amy, um, and it was Amy's friend April that this is the woman who said this to me. So Jim was having a party. I'd gone round his house. We were having a laugh and a joke. I looked across into the garden where the barbecue was happening, and. Um, there was his sister, Amy. I've always got along well with Amy. And she was with a group of girls that I didn't recognise. Um, I saw this girl, I thought she was very pretty. You know, curves in all the right places. I was attracted to her. I thought, yes please. So I said to, I said to Jim, I said, who's, who's, who's that lot with uh, Amy? And he said, oh, they're friends of hers that, from university. And I was like, oh right, okay, you know. So um, so I went over and spoke to Amy in the pretext of meeting the other, her friends, meeting the other women. Specifically this April, I didn't know her name at the time. Anyway, she introduced me to her friends. She introduced me to April, of course, straight the way. I'm in like Flynn. I break her away from the herd and start with the chat. And uh, everything's going well. She's laughing with me. We're flirting together. She seems to be interested. By the end of the night, I've got her phone number, and I've said to her, "I'll give you a call tomorrow." Now, this is in in <laughs> this is 30 years ago. This was before cell phones were a, were a big thing. Uh, they were in the pipeline, but you know, not everybody had a cell phone. No, what happened was you had a landline. So when I say I got her phone number, it was literally the phone number to her house, a landline. So. Uh, so the next day, oh, and this is also before all of that, wait three days or you look too key. Basically, if you like somebody, you called them, you told them you were going to call them, and you called them. So that's what I did. I gave her a phone the next day, said, hi, it's Andy here. And she went, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And we had a laugh and a joke on and We made arrangements to meet up that Friday. So we did. We went out for a drink. Just went to the pub. We had a few drinks, had a good laugh together. End of the evening, I take her home. We have a bit of kiss and cuddle. Everything's going well. I'm thinking this is going fine. I'm I'm in here. Like, you know, she's given me all the right signals. You know, at no time is she, no, I don't want to kiss. No, I don't want to. You know, she's been open and welcome to everything that's happened so far. Brilliant. So we went on another couple of dates. So in about the third date, I thought to myself, this is it. Tonight, you know, I'm going for gold. So I took her to my go-to place. I don't know about you guys, but most of us do have a sort of a go-to place. We went out for a meal, so I wanted to take her somewhere where the food was really good. It wasn't too busy, too noisy in that. The ambiance was nice. It's a, a place where it's not massively expensive, but a little bit out of the way. It was a country pub, so I took her there. We sat down, we ordered our food, we're talking, we've got drinks in front of us, we're chatting away. And I can't remember exactly how the conversation went, but we were sort of laughing together. And she said, Andy, I love you like a brother. I didn't have this face on after she said that. I was stuck with a sort of half sickly grin. If you could have seen a buffer signal above my forehead going round and round, and if I was a better editor, I'd have one now to put on the screen for you. But I'm not that good yet. Um, yeah, 
my mind was trying to process what she just said. I think she realised she just said the wrong thing because she started backpedalling straight away. I think you're a great guy. I think you. But that's it. I'm done. That that's the worst thing you could possibly say to a guy. It's the most insulting thing, and I'll explain why. So I said, oh, I'll be back in a minute. Put my napkin down off my lap. Walked straight out to that pub. She thought I'm going to the toilet. I didn't walk straight out. Got in the car, drove home. Left her there. Hey, she had money on her, she can get a tax, she can pay for the meals. I'm not putting up with another moment of her time. I do not want to be around her. Because if I was around her, I would say and maybe do something that she wouldn't have liked. So the best thing for her was for me to get out of there. But I'm telling you, I was absolutely disgusting. Now this is in the days before ghosting someone was a thing. We used to call it blanking them. You just blank them. So when I get a phone call at home, I'd look at the uh, I'd look at the um, display, which would put the caller ID number up, and every time it was hers, I just didn't bother answering it. The same with Amy, Jim's sister. I didn't answer that as well because I know that she's been on the phone to Amy and she's been, you know, basically calling me everything than the son of God. So I, I, I'm avoiding them. I bumped into Jim couple of days later and he actually said to me he says what went on with you in April and I said um Jim well I told him and he went oh god and I went yeah exactly and the best thing Jim is don't get involved and Jim's a good friend you know what he said hey it's your life mate it's nothing to do with me and I'm not even going to run interference I'm not I just don't want to get involved brilliant that's a good friend so it was a few weeks later I'm in a nightclub in fact Jim was with me and who comes cr crashing across the dance floor, eyes like thunder? No, no, it wasn't April. It was Amy, Jim's sister. And she started laying into, how could I treat a friend of hers like this? How could I be so disrespectful of a daughter? And I went, whoa, 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 hang on. You know what she said to me? And, and Amy was like, well, no, she said that she, she was talking, saying how, what a great guy she thought you were. And then the next minute you were gone. And I went, that's not what happened. I said, okay, your brother Jim. I said, um, how often has he helped you move house? Now I know the last time when she came back from university, Jim had actually hired a big van to bring all her stuff back. He hired it himself, drove there, picked all her stuff up and drove her home and helped her unload it. That's what he did, that's her brother. And she says, yeah, yeah, he helped me. I says, and I said, how many times? She said, about three times I've, you know, called on Jim. I says, yeah, yeah, yeah. I says, um, you ever more borrowed any money off Jim? Now I know she has. And she goes, well, yeah, she said that. She says, well, you know I have. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I says, um, how many times have you shagged Jim? Her face went white for a start and then it went boiling hot red. And she went, oh, that is disgusting. How could you say that? And I went, stop right there. Exactly. Because that's what it means. That's exactly what she said to me when she said, I love you like a brother. She says, I want your help, your support and your resources, but I don't ever want to sleep with you. I said, and that's why I have nothing to do with her. That's why I'm completely blanking her. I said, and that's why you standing up for her on her side has now made our situation a little bit more awkward. You're my best friend's sister. I said, and where I used to respect you. And she went, oh, hang on a minute. And she starts backpedaling. I went, no, think about it. You've just done the sister thing. I'm sticking up for my friend. You didn't know all the situation, but you still came across here and started berating me for something she did. I don't think we're ever going to be as close as we once were. And that was being a little bit hyperbolic, but she, it got the point across. She understood. And I guess that since that day, we haven't been as close as we always were. She's still Jim's sister. Jim's still a great friend of mine. But um, no, she picked the wrong side. So you tell me, was I right? Tell me, was it the most disgusting thing a woman could say to a man? Because I think it is. I love you like a brother. I want all the benefits of you being like a brother to me, but I'm never going to sleep with you. Despite all of the build-up to this night, all of the, no, at no time 
did she say, oh, we need to slow down, or no, I don't want to kiss you, or, or you know, any of the things that had happened, no, that was all welcomed with open arms. And the moment she said it, you could see on her face that, oh dear, I've stepped in the poop here. Which makes me think, she said that before. I bet you I wasn't the first guy that had got the, I love you like a brother. They're the ones in the friend zone. I've got enough friends. I make my own friends. People that I invite to be my friends. I, no guy who's in the friend zone ever invited himself to that position. And I wasn't going to put up with it from this girl who, to be quite frank, it was so early on that I hadn't really got that much emotionally invested in her that I could just walk away. So you tell me, was I right? Was I wrong? Comments down below. Tell me, do you think it was as disgusting as I did? Again, tell me. Tell me, do you think I acted like a backside? <laughs> Again, tell me. But anyway, my name's Andy R. This is the Brotherhood of Men. And I'm going for a cup of tea because I think I earned one. I need to calm down. Bye now.